Okay, BB-8 and BB-9E. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I cannot decide which droid is better overall. I've always been on the fence. Clocked in many hours with both of them in HUV and Supremacy, the whole shot. And they both have areas where they excel and they do not excel. They excel for the most part, but you didn't come here for a ranking. You came here to see the fastest ways to max out BB-8 or BB-9E, maybe even both. I would completely understand. There is something different about grinding these guys. It feels more rewarding and impactful. That's probably just me, but it's likely also due to the fact that there's not too many maxed BB-9Es out there. I think BB-9E gets a bad rep. From the get-go, he's been compared as the deformed twin to BB-8, but he can hold his own. When you apply these tactics to your grind, the 9E levels will skyrocket, and you'll have a maxed bowling ball after a couple days of elbow grease. But on the topic of a BB-8 grind, it barely qualifies as one. If you want to know how to max out BB-8, you have chosen a hero who is without a doubt one of the most easy heroes to max in the whole game. I do have some bad news though. There's two heroes here, and lots of info, so I'm going to be cutting in the chase quite frequently, and leaving out the memes as best as I can. No. I'll be covering BB-8 first, so if you'd like to see the BB-9E guide, click on the timestamp in the description. Okay, let's talk about the star cards that we'll be using for BB-8. It is imperative to have purple star cards for self repairs, whirlwind, and spinner. If you do not have these cards at purple, it will severely weaken the strat, so I highly suggest leveling him up to 25 before beginning this guide. The backbone of this method is BB-8's Cable Spin, and because of this I chose cards that increase the damage and area of effect of this ability. Equally as important, I chose a star card that reduces the cooldown of the Cable Spin by 10 seconds if you hit a minimum of 2 enemies with the ability. Even though BB-8's hitbox is small, you'll be putting him into tight, close quarters areas, where the entire team has distance sensitive aimbot. You will get hurt after every encounter, and this 100 health regeneration increase is super helpful. Even though a big survival factor in this guide is gaining health on kill, sustaining yourself faster than you're being ripped apart, BB-8 needs all the help you can get. And without this card, I felt completely naked and afraid. For the BB-8 co-op grind, I chose one map, the MC-85 Star Cruiser. Those of you who have watched the Chewy video may be like, oh great, it's just going to be as easy. I'll have one hand on the controller, and on the other hand, I'll have a finger picking my nose. No, it's not that simple. There are a few key variables in these tactics that can throw the entire thing off for BB-8. Okay, on the MCD-5 Star Cruiser, you do not need BB-8 on the first phase. The ideal scenario is that you build up enough battle points on this phase to spawn in as him on the next. You should also let the enemy cap as fast as possible. This increases the amount of time we'll have on phase 2, which is the real gold of this map. Don't worry if you come to the party a little late, you can still annihilate the enemy team. Before you enter in cable spin, make sure you scout ahead with resistance backing. If you see a BB-9E close to you through the wall, come in through a different entrance and cable spin from that angle. Because getting shocked in a situation where you have 20 stormtroopers that want to jump down your throat is not fun. After you spin flip their guts, this room should be clear. But if your ability is close to ending and there are still stormtroopers running around, cut a path around this box and hide here until your teammates join the action. Here, you can contest the objective and are small enough not to get shot. When wrestling this objective, it's nice to have Finn, but it is not necessary. Our cable spin recharge card gets the job done just fine. But when it is on cooldown, get into the habit of spearing heavies and reinforcements with your charge. This ability is great for finishing off the big guys, so try your best to not waste it on the weaker infantry. While you're waiting for the next wave to spawn, make sure you're positioned next to your friendly heroes. You get XP for just being near them, because you have a passive that recharges friendly abilities. So if you're an efficiency nutcase, be glued to your teammates when you're not being shot at. Focus on your radar. When it glows bright red, it's time to move. Get into the hallway, and after a second, launch cable spin. You can be back here for 5 seconds before rushing back. This is a wonderful XP outlet, but it comes with some complications. If an enemy specialist throws a shock grenade at the ground, and it catches you while you're in cable spin, it will cancel the ability. If a Sith Trooper's grenade damages you, it will prevent you from gaining health after each trooper you kill, which is a huge part of staying alive in this hallway. So if your eye isn't super great at spotting those grenades, it's perfectly okay. You can instead pay attention to two things, your health bar and cable spin ability progress. If you're hit by a Sith Trooper grenade, your health will turn red and have fishnets for the duration of the debuff. By a specialist shock grenade, the cable spin will prematurely cancel. So if any of these two things happen, dash like a nutcase out of the hallway. Even if it means using your charge ability, get out of there as fast as you can. But after a successful wipe, as you're coming back to the objective, make sure you use your left ability. Whenever an enemy revealed by this ability dies, you'll get 100 XP for the assist. 
This way, not only are you getting 13 to 15 kills in a matter of seconds, but you're also getting partial credit for the kills made back at the objective, while also getting XP from recharging your teammates' abilities. Yep, this is the fastest way to earn XP for any hero, but he still can be shafted by a Chewbacca that knows how to charge slam the hallway, so keep that in mind. Don't get too carried away with objective cleanup, because you'll be needed back at the hallway pretty frequently, so save your cable spin exclusively for the hallway. If you're killing it on this phase, you should be looking at 60 to 70,000 XP after 5 minutes. Guys, this is batshit insane. When I found out about this strat with BB-8, my mouth hung agape for about 2 minutes after the match had ended. But here's the kicker, it doesn't even have to end there! You can still continue the same crazy XP per minute gameplay. If the timer gets to around 30 seconds, get off the objective. Let the first order swarm and cap it. But right before it gets captured, you can introduce yourself, then a fallback. When the enemies are pushing on phase 3, come to this spot and rickroll their kneecaps. I would recommend only two of these wipes, because letting the enemy get to phase 4 is a good thing. Before we get there though, let's say you've got to head to your wife's boyfriend's court hearing. Well, ending it on phase 3 is actually quite simple. On either objective, you can cable spin enemies through the computer consoles. But if you get to phase 4, great. Just like phase 2, there is only one objective the enemy has to capture to win. Most come out of this doorway. they can come out of the sides too. I found their spawn cooldowns to be shortened here, so make sure you laser focus for the remainder of the match. If you get hurt, you can hide back here and recover health. An equally good spot is right here. Using your left ability before you launch a decent cable spin is key here. Also, try to focus on the enemy heroes first, because all of them are able to stun you in the middle of a cable spin. But if you play the MC-85 Star Cruiser just like this, from start to finish, Lord Almighty will you have struck the treasure horde of XP. A good number is 100 to 140,000 XP after 12 minutes on the MC-85 Star Cruiser. Now let's do a throwback and do some math here. If your BB-8 is level 25 right now, you need 975 levels to go, which is 24,375,000 XP in total. You would need to play 203 games of maximum efficiency MC-85 Star Cruiser games. And here's where it gets gross. If you're on triple XP, that number drops to around 70. Or just 14 hours total to max out BB-8. Okay, now for the goth ball. In terms of star cards, you'll want to be running full reconstruction, linked systems, and faster faster. Full reconstruction increases his health regeneration, super great. Linked systems increases the damage of his basic shock, and faster faster increases the damage of his middle ability provided you hit two enemies with it. I ran this loadout for a large portion of my BB9E grind. It's really good, my favorite to use in Supremacy 2. But wait, for co-op I found there to be a much better loadout if you're deep into the maximum efficiency mindset. See, the problem people have with BB9E is that his damage output is far too low for their taste. In co-op, he's beaten to the punch by a Chad Palpatine, a Kylo with nothing to lose, and a Phasma who lands shots. It's true, he's a supportive hero, but does this mean that there is no way you can earn as much XP as those guys? No, there is one thing that everyone overlooks about BB-9E, and that is his right ability. When we use this ability, we prevent our basic shock and our friendly blasters from overheating. In addition, it recharges the abilities of our teammates faster for the duration. The blue number on this ability tells you how many teammates you are going to affect with this ability before you use it. Whenever any of those guys gets a kill with your right ability active, you get 100 bonus XP for aiding them in their kill. This bonus stacks up another 100 if you just tap the trooper with a shock and move on to the next. You get a little bit of damage XP, an assist bonus, and a team play bonus. All you have to do is time this ability right, whether it's before a massive Palpatine shock or a crazy Kylo frenzy. And in trading linked systems out for swift power, not only do we gain more frequent access to this amazing ability, but we also lower the damage we deal to enemy troopers with our basic shock, which will in turn increase our chances for an assist team play combo. This does push you into a more supportive role, but oddly enough it is more XP efficient even though Charge Up is a hot ability, his Shock Spin is the backbone of his XP efficiency, and if you want to know the best places to use it, you have come to the right place. For the BB-9E grind, I focused heavily on the MC-85 Star Cruiser for its tight spots. BB-9E thrives in spaces where your teammates are bunched up, and where your enemies are bunched up as well. I do recognize that there aren't a million people playing co-op First Order these days, so I'll be touching shortly on Star Killer Base and Asian Claws, because those come right behind the MC-85. On Starkiller Base, your goal is to cut off the game on the first phase. Getting the enemies off the objective can be pretty easy. 
Just wait behind cover and use your left ability to scan enemies through walls. After you've planned a good shock spin route, follow through. The mission here is to keep pushing the enemy back until you can bully the spawns here by objective A. 99% of the time your teammates will see what you're doing and head over to B, so it should be totally okay. When a big wave spawns, wait a couple seconds then come down into the dip with your shock spin running. Just like with BB-8, BB-9E's middle ability can be cancelled out by a shock grenade, so keep that in mind. In holding the enemy back on the first phase and harvesting the spawn back here, you should be snatching 15 to 20,000 XP after 4 minutes. On Agent Claws, don't use BB-9E. Use any other villain. It's a death zone for this little guy. If you can, don't push the objective and try to end the match as quick as possible. ATSTs will rip you apart. It's super open, difficult to see where you're being shot from, and you need good teammates if you're going to survive. If you are new to BB-90, I don't recommend going for the win on this map. The only reason I'm talking about it is because it leads right into the MC-85. On the Star Cruiser, you want BB-9E as quick as possible. We get 3000 XP per objective capture. Also, in case any of you were not aware, if you're on the objective as it is being captured, you get 500 XP. So on triple XP, it's like you're getting a free half a level with each cap. On the second phase, push through the left hallway and stop in the doorway. Use your left ability and try to spot a Finn. If there is, wait for your team to push with you. But if there isn't, introduce yourself with a shock spin. This should give your teammates the courage to push up with you, so towards the end of the ability, activate charge up. The spawns on phase 2 can bug out sometimes, so this should be a simple cap. But if any do come down the hallway, just answer with a shock spin. On phase 3 you can choose either side. I like going right because it has pretty decent cover. Use your left ability, and then wrestle the objective in a manner that suits you. But once this place is clear, you can scout out around the map for victims. The enemies will be pretty spread out, so it shouldn't be too bad. If you spot a Finn, hit him with everything you've got, because he is like a god to the enemy team. If he uses big deal while you're attempting to shock spin the whole squad, you will get some dirt in your eye. If you want to be an asshole though, you can just wait until a big chunk spawns on this phase, then do a shock spin pass through this hallway. Alright, phase 4, the real meat of this map. I found this to be the best entry method. Come to this doorway, then through this route, and shock spin. The goal is to ragdoll the guys in the back to the ones in the front so we can deal efficient damage for as long as possible. When we come at things from the front, it often splits the resistance down the middle. Resulting in a less damaging middle ability. Completely wiping the enemy team off the objective isn't necessarily what we want either. This is the best XP pool Emo 90 e has to drink from, and if you prolong it, Limp risk the gameplay after you shock spin and wait for the next spawn to fill in, you'll be walking away with a lot more XP. A lot of the time your teammates will be incompetent enough to make that strat work. If it seems like the objective is being locked down however, feed off this hallway until the match ends. A good number is 50 to 60,000 XP after 10 minutes of efficient shock spins and charge ups. It'll take some getting used to, but after you surrender your mind to the BB9E grind, you shouldn't have too hard of a time. And that is BB8 and BB9E. I hope these tips help you reach that beautiful level cap, and if you do hit the top, be sure to let me know. I hope this year is starting off well for you, and I wish you the best of luck with your grind. Really appreciate you sticking to the end of this long ass video and bestowing that like. With that being said, kick some ass, take some names, and snag those levels. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day.